to another episode of the Bank Free Blueprint. Today I have with me Matthew Sullivan. Welcome, Matthew. Thanks, Tom. Looking forward to being on the show. Yeah, yeah, great. What I wanted to talk about today is you've got some, a pretty cool new project going. And it's, um, well, it's not all that new, but it's something you've been working on for some time. And it is the, uh, it's the Hooked on Startups podcast. And you've got some other things that are going along with that. Uh, you're, you're doing some, you're planning on eventually doing some mentoring and things like that. Just, uh, um, would you mind just giving just a bit of a, a bit of background and how you got to this point with, with your efforts with the Hooked on Startups podcast and generally those efforts? Well, the, the great thing about a podcast is that people will give you their time. So it's, it's a magical process because... And by the way, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> <That's great. laughs> it's, 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 it's quite all right. It's all about giving, and we, we can come on to that in a bit. But um, the, the great thing about um, my life is I, I meet some really, really interesting people, and mm -hmm. I am uh, you know, pretty overwhelmed um, in, in many cases by how brilliant these people are, what they've achieved, uh, and they're generally really nice people. Mm -hmm. and they've all got um, an amazing story to tell. Well, I have to say that I've, I've listened to a lot of your podcasts and I, every single, there, there's a lot of variety, but every single one, I mean, there, there's just, I really enjoy those podcasts because of the way, partly because of the way you do your interviewing. I, I love your interviewing style, but it's all, also some really interesting guests. And it, it's all, I like the idea that it's tied in with the entrepreneurial uh, side of things. And I just think there's a lot of, there's been a lot of great value for me in them anyway, but. Sorry. Well, thank you. No, it's really kind of you to say that, but the, the more I do it, the more fun it is because mm -hmm. um, for a start, everyone seems to be very receptive. So you can, you can talk to people and say, I have this podcast, which is called Hooked on Startups. And it's not, there's no agenda. So the really good thing is that, it's not sponsored. I don't sell advertising. There's no, there's no course. There's no, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing there that I'm trying to sell off the back of the podcast. It is a genuine interest in people's lives, their stories, what they've achieved because I've been an entrepreneur for pretty much all my working life, which is, you know, almost 30 years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, being an entrepreneur is, is a very lonely thing in some cases because, because of the way you are as an entrepreneur, because you yeah. tend to be um, pretty headstrong. Yeah, lone wolfing it once in a while, right? Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> right, exactly. You do, and, and the thing is, you, you, you tend not to take advice from people because you think, well, you know, what do they know? Because if they were so good, they'd be doing it themselves. And, right. And so there is this. Um, you're kind of anti-mentor, you're anti-advice, you're anti-establishment, you're unemployable. Um, and what you have is this vision as an entrepreneur that you're going to change the world or that you're going to do great things. And that's brilliant to have that vision. And what happens over time is you realize that actually you need help and it's better if you get advice from someone has, that's done this in the past. And, yes. um, and, and also there are people that can help you along the journey by spreading the load, by doing some of the things that you're not quite so good at. Mm -hmm. um, and as you get older, you learn more about yourself. You learn more about what you're good at and what you're not good at. And, and you get better at, at, at doing things. Um, and so, you know, what I've learned um, particularly over the last few months doing this podcast um, is, is how amazingly generous people can be mm -hmm. and the more successful people are and the, the, the happier they are in themselves and the more inclined they are to, mm -hmm. to share stuff and, and to tell you about um, not, you know, just how good they are, but tell you about where they went wrong. And I get a lot of, Oh, I did that. And you know, guess well, what? Well, it didn't, didn't quite work out. So that's one of the things that I've noticed with your podcast. You have a way of, of interviewing that really gets them into that sort of the personal level, the, the, where you can really get to know who the people are. 
And so the combination of that style of interviewing, keeping it really relaxed and uh, letting, letting your guests be vulnerable, just really, they open up so well, but also you, you also have the ability to get some really great guests. I mean, how any, so if, if somebody wants to start a podcast or if some, maybe just, just thinking about maybe advice that we can give or just thoughts that, that, yeah, of course. Well, I think the most important thing is, is you've got to do it. So I think if you're thinking about doing a podcast, you should do it. Mm-hmm. Because just by virtue of the fact that you're considering it is the, the most important first step. And you're, you're probably doing it for a number of reasons. It could be to help you from a networking perspective, or it could be to help you grow your business. There's a whole bunch of reasons why people do podcasts but well, you were you were a big reason why i kept going too i mean i i had told you i wanted to start the podcast and get it get it rolling and you coached me you 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 that's exactly what you told me is just get out there and do it i was all nervous about well is it going to be perfect is it going to be even good enough and all that yes but you coached me along the way in that and and that's so true i mean I may not be any better than I was when I started, but I'm more comfortable than I used to be. So, so that's, very, that's very kind of you, Tommy. You do realize I was only about two episodes ahead of you. So, yeah, but it was a, it was the pressure behind it that that got me that kept me going. But I think that's the thing, and it's really true in all sorts of things that we do. Where mm-hmm. that's we, true. We see other people doing things, and we think, well, I'd love to be able to do that, but. And, and then the excuses come. I haven't got time. I haven't got the skill set. I don't know where I'm going to get the, the people from. Who would possibly want to speak to me? The microphone um, isn't quite right. The, the lighting isn't there. The, yeah. yeah. And where do I start? And what questions am I going to get? And mm-hmm. what happens? And so the, our minds are very good at finding reasons why not to do things. Mm. Um, and so, I mean, po- po- what podcasting is really is just a way of, communicating with people it's a way of sharing stories and Mm -hmm. what what tends to happen when you meet people in a networking environment is that they're very keen to tell you about themselves Mm -hmm. so that they can find out how you can help them so if you go to a typical environment where you're meeting people the first question you ask people or they'll ask you is so what do you do Mm -hmm. and that question really is It's a two-part question. The first reason they're asking that is they want to find out if you're going to be helpful or useful to them. Mm -hmm. So it's, what do you do? In other words, do you happen to do anything that could be useful for me? And the second reason they ask, what do you do, is to find out whether or not what they do is better. So if you say, you know, I'm a, I don't know, I'm a plumber, then you say, oh, well, you're a plumber, but I'm the chief executive of a cryptocurrency company which makes me feel good because you're a lowly plumber <laughs> and, and so the great thing about podcasts is when you're talking to people you, you you can dispense with that because you're both in a very relaxed environment where you both know that you're going to be talking to each other for you know half an hour 45 minutes something like that so and the person that you have on as a guest has set aside 45 minutes in their diary and a lot of the people that you speak to are pretty busy people but for some reason they like the idea of of talking to you because it's it's something that hasn't been uh, done to death you know podcasting is still a you know you know it's still a um, it's got a spark of uh, of newness about it yeah and and you touched on it just a bit ago too another piece of it i think is entrepreneurs generally as a whole as a rule really do like giving back and they do they like sharing they they want they want the world to be a better place and so what better way than to get on a podcast and share the message without having any sort of ulterior kind of pressure or outside pressures and so i think that that's part of it too right and the other funny thing is that when you talk to people who are very successful at what they do and that can be all sorts of different fields their nervousness really is how are we going to fill 45 minutes? I haven't got that much to say. Uh huh. And, and it's just that sort of, it's that self deprecation, that humility that comes from, well, I, all I do is what I do, but what you do happens to be, you happen to be really good at it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, in your case, Tom, you know, you have 
decades of experience in real estate. But I remember when we spoke, there was that nervousness that, that you had. Well, well, you know, well, what are we going to talk about? Yeah. Well, just, it's going to be worth how it. about the last 40 years of your life? <laughs> <laughs> and, have you, and, and what you've learned and some of the stories. Mm-hmm. And, and when, you, when you can sit with people and start saying, this is not about sales. You're not pitching. Let's listen to your story. Let's, let's explore those things. Let's take you back to some of those places where you had that moment where you thought, God, oh, that's fantastic. And mm. other moments where you thought, hang on, you know, this isn't going to end well. Yeah, and, what am I doing? Right. And, and the thing that, that you're absolutely right, when you talked before about how people love giving, one of the things I've really noticed is how this concept of g- giving without really wanting something in exchange there is and you get tuned into it and you find that um and it's not stage stage managed but if you're with a bunch of people and you really are interesting interested in what these people are doing you find yourself wanting to um help them and you can tell the guys that are trying to fake it but but it's great when you meet people that really do want to help because they're, they're really interested in what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And you can feel that every molecule in their body is desperately searching for something that they can, they can help you with. Yeah. And, and you can see them scratching their heads thinking, who do I know in this sector that I can put you in touch with? Or, yeah, I did that and, and it didn't work. Or you need, to, you need to go to this website or you need to try that. And yeah, that's, that can, that, that's so powerful. It is. It, uh, being able to do that. Do you, um, with your vision, a while back, this, well, maybe a month ago or so, you and I were talking and you had this, this concept or this vision of what, what the progression would be with your podcast and with your, your efforts and, and getting into um, helping other people out. What has that, and you've got, you've got the book now and different things like that. Can you just maybe share like a broad vision of, of where you're going or a broad uh, description of where you're going and what, what your vision is and, you know, just share that? Yes, of course. So it's really, I want to do more of this because it's fun and it's not, I mean, podcasting, if you read a lot of various articles, it, you know, it, if, you do, if you do it wrong, it can become a soul-sucking obsession. In other mm-hmm. words, where you don't get any pleasure out of it. And what happens, it becomes a commitment. And then it becomes a pod fail as opposed to a podcast because mm-hmm. you stop doing it. But I, I'm getting to the point now where there are so many people that, that I want to speak to. And every now and then people approach me. Um, but I'm, I, I, I'm part of this group where we meet every, every Saturday and we swap ideas and things. And there's so many great things that these, things, that these guys are doing that – there's almost not enough hours in the day to be able to get this across. So what I don't want to do is try and um, ruin that vibe by, 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 I'm not, it's a challenge actually, because I've been, I've been scratching my head about this for, for, for weeks about, you know, what, what is, how, how do you grow it? How do you, and the, the first thing that happens is you see all these guys on Facebook that have, um, all these courses about how to get a million email addresses in 14 seconds yeah. or how I built my um, growth hacking agency in, in, and, um, you know, just send, and it's always $97 or $47 or $297. Right. Um, and you, I think you get something which probably isn't going to give you a great deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been, trying to navigate my way through that because you get a, a sense of when you see all these guys, you assume that they're all hugely successful because they're getting, you know, 18,000 likes and mm-hmm. 2 million shares and all this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just keep doing the podcast. Um, I'm going to convert a lot of the, uh, because each podcast gives you tens of thousands of, of words of mm-hmm. um, great content. So one of the really good things is if you transcribe a podcast, an average podcast of 45 minutes, you can get about you know, 10,000 words. Mm-hmm. And from that, each of the guests that I've had on have, there, there, there've been some real 
valuable, important pieces of information. And it's so much easier to, to articulate that and to share that with people in written format rather than getting them to go through the whole video mm-hmm. or the whole podcast. Yeah. So really what I want to do is just find out ways of getting as much information out of those conversations, sharing it for nothing with as many people as possible. And, and that's kind of where I was going with this was the, the, the vision that you have. You're, from what I remember when we were talking, your vision was to help the people that are, they're either starting up as an entrepreneur, they're, they're trying to figure out wh- what, what road to take, um, they're, they may be well on their path, but it's helping, helping the entrepreneur get to that next level of where they're going. And the, and the way you were, you described to me was through the podcast, bringing on the guests that are going to be able to bring people to that next level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's really, and the way to do it, I think is through giving people insight into what other people have done Mm -hmm. and the way they did it and how everyone starts from the same place. So everyone starts from zero. You're not, you're not born an entrepreneur or, um, and there's also all sorts of other pieces of wisdom, which I think are really important. So if, if you listen to some, it's not, it's not about me, but if you listen to the people that are on the podcast, then you'll understand that you don't all have to go for the whole unicorn thing Mm -hmm. and the whole, um, there's, there's a lot of people that, feel that they need to be a tech entrepreneur or they need to, uh, if they're not a unicorn by the time they're 23, then they've failed. Yeah. You know, and if you can build a business that provides you with a solid income that gives you the flexibility to do what you want to do for your entire life, gives you the ability to live where you want to live, gives you the ability to control your time, spend time with your wife, your children, whatever you want to do, that is incredibly valuable. And I think that the more people I speak to, then the more that theme is is current, where it's not about being that 0.00001% that -hmm. gets the billion dollar company. It's about finding who your authentic self is. And you've got to remember, I come from from England, and we don't use words like authentic self. (laughs) You know, we don't use words like, you know, inner truth and that sort of thing. And you know, it's all about just get on with it, you know, stiff up a lip and. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so two questions. One is the other day when you and I were talking, you were, you were sharing how one of the, the coaches that you had been working with actually helped as a stepping stone to get to that next level. Yeah. And that really is about, trying things Mm -hmm. and seeing if it works and not being afraid to admit that it doesn't work, Mm -hmm. recognizing that it's not who you are or it's not the right thing. Mm -hmm. And then being able to be to it. And one thing, so the, the group that I go to is called metal international. It stands for media entertainment and technology. Um, and there's a group of very, inspirational, successful people from all walks of life. And we meet up in West Hollywood every Saturday. It's run by Ken Rutowski, who's um, a very, uh, very talented, very clever connector, synthesizer, um, pulls all these people together, puts them in a room and magic happens. Yeah. And one of the things he said today, which really resonated was one of the real issues you have as an entrepreneur is you become wedded to your idea. And one of the greatest pieces of advice of advice that he received was don't treat your ideas as ideas, treat them as projects. So you may have this idea, which is your vision. Mm -hmm. Your vision has to roll out in this particular way. And if it doesn't, then it's the end of the world. And his advice really was treat that as an, that, that idea as just a project. So in other words, and with a project, you put timelines around it, you put goals, you put milestones, Mm -hmm. you describe what the project is, what you're hoping to achieve with it, how much money you're going to make, you put numbers around it, Mm -hmm. um, and then you you set sail with it. So 
and then and the, the project will either meet the milestones or it won't. Mm-hmm. And then if it fails for whatever reason, um, then it's not that your idea has failed or that your vision has failed. It's that this particular project has mm-hmm. been unsuccessful. Uh, you know, and, and, as, and as we know from, you know, as history tells us, you know, failure is just the chance to do things again, but with more information. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think what I was doing, thankfully, was taking my own advice, which was there are a number of ways that I was looking at. I was looking at how can I monetize this podcast? Mm-hmm. And then I realized, actually, that that's the last thing I want to do. Yeah. I don't want to monetize it. Right. Um, and, and so understanding that that wasn't me and that's that's part of that comes from discussions i've had with the people that i've met if it's not you then don't do it yeah and trying to force yourself down a particular route because you think that's what you should be doing um you're going to end up facing a brick wall um Mm -hmm. and you've got to either turn around and go back and try something else. Yeah. And even if it does work, you probably won't be happy with it. And that's what happens to a lot of people. I mean, in life generally, they do things because they've been brought up that way or um, because they've started. So they'll finish, you know, and they get embarrassed because they think that people will think they're a failure if they, they, they stop what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But one of the interviews I had very recently with a guy called Sam Morris, um, who runs a company called Zen Warrior Training. Now, um, Sam was a professional cyclist, and in his late 20s, he was involved in a car accident that almost 20 years ago now put him in a wheelchair. So he's been in a wheelchair for um, a long time. And uh, as you know, his approach is, you know, life didn't end then. So he's had to completely discover how to deal with the trauma of that and how to actually rise above it. Um, and just spending an hour or an hour and a half talking to him was just beyond fascinating because if you meet someone that has this incredible depth of character, that is not sales pitch, that is not there trying to get something from you, but is really just very focused and centered Mm. and neutral. And one thing that he said, which was fascinating, was people are in a culture where they tend to try and be positive. So um, a lot of the teachings or training that you'll see in social media is about how to be positive. Mm-hmm. So we must maintain a positive mental attitude and be positive, positive, positive. And what Sam was saying was just be neutral. Uh-huh. Don't, you don't have to be positive every day. Just be neutral. And if you can be neutral, if you can find who you really are, if you can let the dust settle and the noise stop, mm. and we're chasing deadlines and train times. and just, Yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and, and that, uh, that, that actually goes right into what my second question was, and that is, you just now spoke about the idea of creating if if you're really intense on something and it's it's all you to actually separate yourself maybe if i understood correctly and create it as a project because then you can still have that same intensity and work towards it and make it happen but if it doesn't go as you thought it would or it doesn't go as you want it to be it doesn't take away your identity Um, so being able to separate yourself that way but on the other side of the spectrum the There are people, I think, who get caught up in the, especially with social media, where it's at right now, and all of the solutions to, I mean, like you just said, you go on Facebook, and you got all kinds of uh, things that that have the the answer, the the whatever. And so how to get that focus and really be able to sift through all of that noise and and bring it back to where you're really focusing on what you're doing, um, it and that's, that's, I think, what you're talking about with, with um, what you said your guest had, had spoken of, and that was kind of getting to that neutral point and letting the mind quiet. Any, any thoughts around that? Yeah, it is. And that's the one thing that I discovered, really, is that you have to speak from your authentic self. And it sounds... It's becoming a lot easier for me to talk about this sort of stuff. (laughs) 
I think it's the California effect, but, <laughs> but, but really it is. And it's, the, it is truth. I mean, the truth is, is if you're chasing things that are not you, mm-hmm. ultimately it will never be you. Yeah. And, that, and it's the same with whatever you're doing, whether you're, um, whatever business you're in or whatever you do in life generally, if you're doing things that are not you, then that means that you're, you're faking it. You're acting. Mm-hmm. It takes an enormous amount of energy to, to do that. And, and it slows you down. Whereas the moment you find out what you should be doing, what your true, um, sort of, you know, pathway or whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. is, everything becomes a lot easier. And yeah. so, and if we take your sort of Facebook course example as one thing, you can look at it, but it's always going to end up being disappointing for you because what you're doing is you're following someone else's path mm-hmm. and they'll make money out of you, which is their objective. Yeah. Um, and you'll end up with, um, you know, oh, yeah, two gigabytes of you know, milky disappointment basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and the reason for that is because you haven't figured out who you are in terms of why you're doing it and what you want to do it. And that's, that's what separates the people that are very successful, both in relationships and in business is because they've taken the time to breathe, to understand who they are, mm-hmm. not trying to be someone else. They're not trying to keep up with the Joneses. Um, and, and then, you know, money becomes slightly secondary or, or very secondary. Mm-hmm. And then we talked earlier about, collaboration and abundance what happens is the moment you figure out who you are and where you are and where you're comfortable then you're not trying to prove yourself to everyone you meet so your question what are you working on or what do you what do you do becomes a genuine question and Mm -hmm. people can detect that yeah will then start talking to you about what they're doing and actually you're interested because you're not trying to position yourself as being better than them you're not trying to take from them you're genuinely having a conversation. You're sharing ideas and stories and points of view. You begin to build a relationship. And at that point, you see how you can help them. And, and your natural reaction is, what can I do for you? Or I see you're, you're doing this. Let me see if I can help. Mm-hmm. And it's not because you want something in exchange, but the natural result of that mm-hmm. is that the person that you're talking to wants to find a way to help you because not because of the obligation, but because he likes you or she likes you. And that's, that's one of the great truths I think that is actually so simple that, um, you know, everything begins with, with you begins with who you are. And that's something that has, that I've learned, um, over time, but just speaking to all these people, that is the common thread. That's, that's what really shines out with all these people is that they are very much, um, happy in their own skin. Um, yeah. They're very excited about what they do and they're very excited about sharing it mm-hmm. and seeing how they can help other people. Yeah, I, I think with, uh, again, back to the authentic self sort of discussion, if we, the way I look at it is when, we, when we're pushing to get something done, when, when we're determined to get it done, when we're trying to make ourselves just right to present ourselves to the to the other people just right it's not our authentic self and with that comes the not only the burden of being able to try and hold up that that position or whatever you want to call it but it also it's i look at it as the difference between a a draw and a push so so drawing drawing people into our tribe or drawing people into our our vision rather than trying to push people nobody likes to be pushed first of all but it's uh, what i'm hearing you say too is it it it, it's like a the ability to draw and the the ability to get people to do what you uh, what your vision is and but not by not not with some like underhanded efforts or anything like that but really just genuinely sharing what the vision is, what the story is, helping other people. That's one thing I've learned over the last six, seven years. I, I mean, the amount of things that I've learned from the mentoring that I've done or from the, the different things that I've worked on, it just it comes back to me so much more than trying to just organize everything so it's perfect and then get people to do what you want them to do. So. And you're right. And I think the more you understand about what you're you know your vision or your 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 um 
you know, who you are and, and what you're good at, um, then, then you're in the position to, to trade that because you've got something that's, doesn't matter who you are or what you do, mm-hmm. you have a story, you have great value. And this is not, I'm not just saying this because everyone I've met, there is something about everyone. And if they could just get out of their own way, mm-hmm. they would realize what that is. Um, and that's valuable to, to everyone. Everyone has value to everybody else. And it's not just financial value. It could be helping them take the next step um, in terms of their understanding of, of who they should be. It could be a, a spiritual thing. It could be a religious thing. It could be a business thing, but yes. you know, everybody is in the position to help everybody else. Yes. And the, the great thing is the, as soon as you realize that you have value, as soon as you realize that you don't have to be the millionaire, the unicorn, the entrepreneur driving the Ferrari, as soon as you realize that, I'm not saying that, you, that you'll never get that, but as soon as you can start breathing and, and understanding where you are and what your yeah. pathway is, then other people see you as having, um, uh, as, as being really interesting because there's not that agenda. Yeah, it's almost a sense of allowing it to happen rather than forcing it to happen. Absolutely. And then what happens is you realize that you've got value to other people that you can trade. Mm -hmm. If you want information about real estate investing, for example, Mm -hmm. many people don't know where to begin. But if you put yourself amongst people that know that business and you're open and honest and approachable um, and you're able to share and trade, listen, I'm a really good this or I'm a really good that, is there something I can do to work with you? Is there something I can do to help you? Yeah. And in exchange, spend time, you teach me a little bit about what you do. Mm-hmm. That's the way that you can, I don't like using the word leverage, but that's the way that you can make use of what you know. Mm-hmm. I and mean, you, know, you could be a graphic designer, you could be a, a life coach, you could, be a, you could know who all the babysitting mums are in your area. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly valuable, I can tell you. Um, or you could know how to put a child to sleep just by staring into his eyes. I don't know, but stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can share that and, and, and add that to other people's lives, then, then all of these walled gardens that seem impenetrable to you mm-hmm. open up because people want to share it. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. The, your podcast, uh, again, I just I really enjoy the episodes. And what I, I would ask you and... I think I think you can answer this, and that would be if you were to pick maybe three or four or five, just real quickly off the top of your head, the ones that kind of struck you as really. Um, um, well, I think yeah, the, the the more the more recent ones is probably because I've got probably a little bit better at asking questions, but they're all they're all great, and they're all great because they're all very different, and um, they all have differences and common themes, but if even the most recent ones, I mean, there's one with, um, uh, Zach Weinstein, who's, um, originally from Baltimore, um, was in construction, always wanted to be an actor, always wanted to be in movies, basically drove from Baltimore to Los Angeles, um, found a place in Hollywood, went to the Sundance film festival, knowing nobody mm-hmm. and, said, right, I'm going to speak to everyone. I'm going to find out how this business works. I've got some great ideas. I'm going to make connections. I'm going to work and work and work. Never accept no for an answer. And he ended up, because of that enthusiasm, because people could see that he really wanted it and he was, he was you know, honest and wasn't trying to leverage them or, or, or um, take advantage of them, um, he, he made some great connections. Um, Sam Morris, who I... Um, published uh, on Friday yesterday, Zen Warrior Training. Just the ability to really see your life from another perspective, um, teaching you to breathe and to really understand the value of you as a person rather than just to keep running. Ken Dubner mm, taught, me how to, that one, yeah. taught me how to breathe properly. Because mm-hmm. uh, you, know, you can tell when someone is, is tight and, and, and someone when, he's, when they're relaxed. And the, a great thing that he told me was if you're ever ever feeling very stressed in a situation, imagine stepping outside of yourself, standing in the corner of the room where you are, looking at you as the person sitting on the chair and ask yourself, what do you see? So if you see someone who's bent over, all tensed, you know, and, and talking like that, you know, 
like like that, then if you can see that, then you can say to yourself, look, you know, sit up straight. Yeah. Stop being so tense. Let your shoulders go down. Breathe from your sort of from your from from, from your belly rather than from your shoulders. Mm-hmm. And just that trick of actually saying, well, if you if you find yourself in a position where you're really tensing up or you're really nervous or really anxious, just tell yourself from another perspective. So, you know, it's, it's amazing. And these people are giving this information away yeah. because they, they, they believe in it. Um, and the stuff that um, some of these people are doing. So Will Henshaw from Focus at Will and his partner, John Vitale, what they're doing is they're finding ways of, um, you know, based on big data and the information that we're getting from people through social networks now, understanding so much more about, about people reacting to different types of music and if you apply artificial intelligence then you can have a real-time music feed Mm -hmm. that actually detects your mood changes the music that is being played not from pop to rock but actually creates music that's never been played before Mm -hmm. allows you to react to environments in a different way um i mean i've I, I hate being asked because they're all brilliant people. Yeah. yeah, that's why I didn't know for sure how you would answer that, but thank you. But, no. but all of them, they're all, they're all great. And, and yeah. you know, it's, the only thing it costs you is, is your time. I wish mm-hmm. I could speed it up somehow. But. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of time, um, uh, just to move on here, I'm wondering if you have any particular resource that you would recommend. I, I usually ask our guests, like, well, if there was one resource, a book, a and I, you've been on the show before and, and uh, you've shared, but anything that, that pops to mind at this point? Well, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, funny enough, I've got a ton of stuff here on the side. Um, it depends. I mean, there's not, you've got to break it down, I think, and say there are books that give you this. I mean, there are all sorts of great business books and, and you've got the Napoleon Hills Think and Grow Rich stuff, which is the rah-rah book. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you just need to read a couple of paragraphs and you kind of get that, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, you are what you think you are. Um, so there's one book in particular that I'm, um, this, this one here, look. Uh, here you go. This is a great book. The Ladybird Book of Mindfulness. Ah, okay. okay, so I'm going to read a, I read a page, I read a um, paragraph on that. Mm-hmm. There is more wisdom in a waterfall than there is in a hundred men, says Jake. Jake is always saying things like this. His ex-wife's sister calls him jerk. (laughs) It's it's a, okay, it's a Jake book, but you gotta get it, okay? So you have to get this book, The Ladybird Book of Mindfulness, just to put everything in perspective. So Uh that is your go-to book. So when you have more than your fair share of these sort of, uh, uh, you know, self-improvement books get that but the other book that i'm reading right now um and again full disclosure i have absolutely nothing to gain from 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 uh, talking about this book um it's called getting things done by david allen um mm. i've always I've read had that. a problem until relatively recently with my mind racing mm. um thinking i've got a million things to do and just not being able to you know figure out which one I should do first. And one great thing that I learned from this book is that your mind is designed for thinking and creating and not for storing. Mm -hmm. So if you can go out and buy yourself one of these, and for those of you in black and white, I'm holding a book with blank pages that you write on. Mm -hmm. So in other words, one of the great things I learned is that get all your stuff out of your head that you've got to remember and put it down somewhere where you know where it is. So in other words, if you're thinking I've got a thousand things to do, write a list, make sure you know where that list is. Mm -hmm. And if you start worrying about all the stuff you've got to do, say to yourself, look, why am I worrying? Because I know what I've got to do because it's on my list. Mm -hmm. And then your mind suddenly goes, oh, hang on. And it frees up all this space to start thinking creatively and thinking about things that you can do to improve your business or your life or your relationships or your, or your golf swing. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what I learned. Just simple things like that from this book. And I think this is a brilliant book. Um, and it's not one of those books that teaches you how to lead a better life by 
doing stuff that are impossible. Almost every page in here is really useful information. It's been very helpful for me. It's a very personal thing. It, it won't work for other people. Um, and um, just yeah. read books by great people. There's another book here. I'm reading by um, Nolan Bushnell, who's the guy that uh, founded Atari and Chuck E. Cheese. It's called Finding the Next Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, Nolan Bushnell was the guy who created the Silicon Valley work ethic. So this whole idea about going to work to play, you know, pool and shoot basketball hoops as opposed to, you know, wearing a suit and sitting in a cubicle. Nolan Bushnell and Atari created that. Yeah. Um, so just reading books from these people and understanding how they came up with this sort of stuff. So I wouldn't worry too much about these think positive stuff because, you know, it's not, it's not, it didn't work for me. And, and yeah, yeah. the words from Sam Morris are much better and you can have those for nothing, which is, you know, try and be neutral, not positive. And you can, if you can be neutral, then wow, that's, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's fantastic. But um, I haven't got enough. I, I, I try and find time every day just to read a few pages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just to, didn't you uh, interview Nolan or are you going to? No, I'm, no, not yet. No, he's on my, uh, he's on my target list. So I'm going to try and, um, read as much as I can. There's another book that I bought called Atari Inc. Business is Fun, which mm -hmm. is this fabulous um, uh, set of, uh, of, of all the stuff that went on at Atari and how basically they built a business. So I can't, I got that delivered this morning, so I can't wait to get stuck into that. But no, I wanted to go up to Nolan, who again, I, I see every now and then. Um, but rather than just say, hi, Nolan, do you yeah. want to come on my show? I want to be able to yeah. actually, you know, Prove to him that I, that I do have some intelligent questions because, you know, being a a, a demigod, he does actually get approached, you know, relatively frequently. I'm sure, and that gets me back to the podcast, and that's that's I think one of the reasons that I really enjoy your podcast as much as I do is the fact that it, it's always obvious that you've spent time to prepare to get ready for the podcast to really know what's going on. So I think anyone who's thinking about doing the podcast. The more that uh, the more you can be prepared, the better off. Uh, the better off. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's it's kind of respect, isn't it? Really, because mm -hmm. you know you want to, and and also you feel a bit embarrassed if you go into a conversation with someone who's given up your time, mm -hmm. and you're you don't know what questions to ask. Right. So it's it's nice to, and it feel makes them feel great as well. Because if you've taken the time to find out about them, and if you tell them things about themselves in a way that um, that they you know, you're not, you're not um, kowtowing to them, but you're, if you've done that work, then, mm. you know, it's kind of, it's a compliment. And yes. so, yeah, I mean, if you talk to me and if you, like you've done, you've said you've done this, you've listened to the podcast, then God, I want to share with you because if you've taken the time to do that, then, you know, I'm an open book now. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So with the podcast, if, if people want to sign up for your podcast, and I just had somebody call me this morning, uh, they wanted to, subscribe to my podcast and and go through the process and i i took them and i'm relatively new to that part of it as well and so could you just describe the process that you recommend if somebody just has not really done podcasts before but they happen to be listening to this what is the quickest and easiest way for someone to to get on to a, to get it subscribed to a podcast yeah well just well you the easiest way is through itunes funny enough about 80 something percent of podcasts go through iTunes. So um, if you want to listen to my podcast, which is called Hooked on Startups, go to hookedonstartups.com. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a couple of buttons on the homepage um, that you can press that says that'll connect you through to iTunes. Um, so there's all sorts of different ways, but um, the, the, the best way, I would start listening to podcasts by thinking about what you're really interested in. Go to iTunes, put that search term in to the podcast section or go to Stitcher or go to SoundCloud. And why would you go to one or the other, the SoundCloud or Stitcher? If you don't have an iPhone, do you need to go to those? Yeah, I mean, if you have an iPhone or um, if you use Apple, then iTunes is the best place because it has the widest range of podcasts. And if you're walking right through it. Yeah, yeah, but there's but there are other platforms like Stitcher, um, SoundCloud, um, um, FM Player, um, iHeartRadio. Um, mm -hmm. I think yeah. if you just put podcast and your preferred 
you know, mm-hmm. if you want to say podcast entrepreneur, put that in yeah. as a Google search term. But yeah, yeah, it's great. Just I think they are great because, you know, particularly for car journeys, plug in, forget about listening to the radio, just listen to a podcast. Yeah. And it's quite addictive. No, that, that's great. Um, so I think well, we're about ready to wrap it up here, but I wanted to just share with anyone listening, if you have any ideas for other, other topics or if, if you have comments, would love to hear back from you uh, what you like about the podcast that we're doing here, uh, what, what, what ideas you have for maybe ways to improve it, any topics that you'd like us to cover, all of that. Anything that you share with me, you're able to, I'm able to hit the target uh, better. So would, would love to hear from you. And another thing, Matthew, you'll, um, you'll agree with this, I believe, that if, if we get reviews written for us on SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, any of those, that helps ever that helps other people understand and know what the podcast is about and w- the goal here is really to just share a lot of information with a lot of people with the idea that the more that we put out there the more the more we uh, have a life of abundance the more that's going to come back and so if everybody works together to bring bring value to other people that's that's what i've found to be really powerful so Definitely. Yes. No, it's really good. I mean, if you like the podcast, take a couple of minutes and either subscribe to it or leave a review because it, it, it really helps. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, thank you, Matthew. If, if anybody wants to reach out to you, how might they reach out? Is there- yeah, just website, hookedonstartups.com. There's contact pages there. There's information. There's the, uh, all the podcasts listed. That's, that's the easiest way. And I, don't, I didn't really uh, ask you about your book. Um, is, that, uh, is that ready to roll? It's, it's still work in progress. Uh, it's going to be a freebie, um, so I'm going to give it away. Um, or I might charge like 10 cents or something. You know, mm-hmm. but, um, mm-hmm. Great. So we'll watch, we'll watch for that in the very near, near future. So. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Really appreciate you uh, joining us. It's been a a great session. Uh, Really appreciate it.